Hi you guys, welcome back. I'm so excited for this video because I am embarking on a journey that I have been on for a while, but I'm inviting you to join me on it. So I've been on a health and wellness journey for about the last eight years and it has ebbed and flowed and gone in different directions. At the beginning of this year, I started 75 hard and I really loved it. We had a week of like negative 15 degree weather. So I didn't follow through with like the outdoor workouts for that time period, but after some reflection, I realized there are things about the challenge that I really loved, things that didn't really work for me personally, and based on all of my personal journey with my health and fitness and my mindset, I decided to make my own little challenge. And I know if you are a 75 hard lover, you're gonna cringe at me even saying this because the whole point of 75 hard is that it's like a mental challenge. I love that aspect to it, but there were certain things that I know in my soul would be better for me mentally as a challenge than this one. I still would love to do 75 hard in the future, just not right now. So while I was reflecting on it, I was like, well, let me look into 75 soft. Is that something that I would want? But after looking at that, I realized that's kind of how I live my everyday life anyways. I'll put the rules up on the screen so you can see the difference between the two. So I decided to make my own little challenge. It's like a 75 medium. There are things that I'm adding into my challenge and things that I'm taking away. And I invite you to join me on this. This is gonna be very customizable. I think that's the point. And I think that what it comes down to is really taking accountability and really being honest with ourselves about what's going to work and what's not going to work. An old version of me would have been so discouraged that it's now the beginning of February and I'm starting something new, but that to me just shows a lot of growth. You don't have to start something new at the beginning of the new year to make a change. You can make a change at any point in time that you want. I'm titling this video 75 Hard Brianna's Version, but I'm also down for a different name. We can keep that name or we can call it every day till May because I was looking at like the time frame of like when this video goes up and when I want to like end this little challenge. And it's like just a couple days or a week shy of May. And then I was like, let's just do it till May. So regardless of when you're watching this video, you can start and join in at any point. So let me just go over my quote unquote rules of what I'm gonna be doing. If this sounds good to you, you can join in, you can customize it for you. So I split this up into categories because one thing that I felt that 75 hard was missing for me was a soul category so I have a mind body and soul I know that 75 hard is technically a mental like a mental fitness challenge um, it's more about like getting over like mental hurdles that whole thing so I do have mind body and soul written down here as different tiers that I want to focus on or different pillars um, before we even get started by the way I am NOT a doctor obviously this is just something that I'm doing for me and if it resonates with you feel free to join in, but use your best judgment. You can con consult your own doctor, whatever. Um, this is not health advice for anybody. Okay, so in the first category, we have mind. You would think that this would go into the body section, but this for me goes into mind, and this is gonna be walk outside every single day. Um, that was something that I loved about 75 hard was that it really did push me to get in that seventh walk for the week. So I already had such a really good walking routine that I developed last year, and I've continued that through this year, but even through the winter, even through the snow, um, the only thing that held me back were those like negative degree temperatures because that was slightly dangerous. What pushed me with 75 hard was upping it to 45 minutes. I was getting in about a solid 25 to 30 minutes with my walk and it really forced me and pushed me to do a little bit longer, which actually has been so much better than I thought it was going to be. It gave me that extra bit of time that really helped me look inward and reflect and just spend more time in nature. I think one thing too with the winter is getting outside is so crucial, even if it is a gloomy day, because you need that vitamin D, you need that interaction with nature. So that for me has been something that has been so beneficial and crucial. And that was something with 75 hard that really pushed me to get outside even on Sundays, which Sunday is like my day of just like 
relaxation and whatever. So that really helped me to get outside on those days. And if you're taking on this challenge as well, look inward. I think that's like the number one thing with this challenge is to be honest with yourself. If walking outside every day is just something that you know realistically is gonna be so much of a challenge for you, make that number smaller. Maybe it's only three times a week that you're gonna challenge yourself. Give yourself a realistic challenge and just customize this overall challenge for you and then write it down and you can always revisit and add on but be realistic for you and challenge yourself to a place that you know that you can actually achieve it don't make it too easy for yourself either because then it's not a challenge but make it challenging but realistic i think it's so much easier to look at a list of rules that someone else has made and be like okay i'm gonna do that because they said that that's what i need to do that's what i did with 75 hard you also have to be realistic and you have to be honest with yourself about what's challenging but what's realistic at the same time next up we have read a self-development book every single day so the difference between this and 75 hard is 75 hard required it to be an actual physical book that you read. You couldn't even do it on your Kindle. It had to be a physical book. It couldn't be an audio book. For me, I just was like, mm, the benefit wasn't outweighing, you know, like I just, Audiobooks are my jam. They've always been my jam, especially for a self-development book. I could easily spend 15 minutes every day reading a physical book. Truth is, the desire just wasn't there. So for my challenge, I am just putting down, read a self-development book every single day in whatever form works best for you. Is it a Kindle? Do you have a Kindle and that's what you like to read on? Do you like a physical book? That's awesome. Do you like an audiobook? That's awesome. I think if you're doing an audiobook, Give yourself a goal. For me, it's probably gonna be 30 minutes to an hour every single day, which is way more than I would have got in if I sat down and read 10 pages like it is for 75 hard. Um, that would only take me 10 to 20 minutes depending on what the page entailed. So I feel like I'm getting way more out of this. Um, and there are some days where I don't like to listen to a self-development book, but um, I'll pick up like a good self-development podcast. I think the key here is just something that you're gonna be learning from every single day. And you set the time limit for you. We're all so different, our lives look so different. At the same time, this is still a challenge. So you have to prioritize and make time for the things that are important to you. So if reading, is something that you just always say you don't have time for, you just have to prioritize it and make time for it. If you don't know where to start, if you don't know of any good self-development books, I'll link my favorites down below. I have a like to know it page where I share all of my favorite things, lifestyle, beauty, fitness, health, wellness, like you name it. I have a whole like to know it page where I share and link all of my go-to things. So I'll make a whole post dedicated to my favorite self-development books. I'll also share it on Instagram. So that way we can all stay really connected and I can update it throughout this challenge and that way you can get some really good inspiration. The final rule in the mind category is probably the most important and that is to every single day, check in on your stress levels, on your stress management, take a look at it, see how you're feeling, and just analyze that and see, do what you can do to lower your stress levels. Looking back and reflecting on my last two years of, <laughs> of life, <laughs> looking back at the last two years, stress was absolutely what was hindering from reaching any kind of goal that I had. All of my goals just kind of seemed like far-fetched dreams that were so far away and so out of reach. And that felt so, different for me because for years I've, if I had a dream or I had a goal, I had the confidence and the drive to reach those goals. So the last two years, just feeling so not like myself, so out of my body and so, I just felt so helpless. And now looking back, I can tell it was absolutely my stress levels and I didn't know how to manage my stress. I think everybody is a little bit different. It really just depends on what stress you're going through. We all are going through stressful things at all times. We live in a very stressful world, but I think just really focusing in and be, again, being honest with yourself about what is it that is stressing you out the most and learning how to manage that. Again, going through a stressful situation isn't a bad thing. It's more about how to handle that stress. There's so much talk about cortisol. I've, I feel like that is such a buzzword that I've heard throughout the last year that was just kind of getting on my nerves because I knew that my cortisol was high and it was like, 
I was I was stressed and then my cortisol was high and then I was stressed because my cortisol was high. It was just like constant stress. So just maybe doing like a little bit of a deep dive, seeing what is gonna work best for you, whether that's taking magnesium, whether that's doing yoga, whether it's really actually addressing the issues in your life that are causing that stress. Is it confronting people in your personal life? Is it standing up for yourself? Is it, you know, unpacking the thing that you've swept under the bed for so long? You know, whatever it is, if it's something that you can change or figuring out how to manage that. A lot of things we can't actually change. Some things just are what they are and just learning how we can manage that stress in a healthy way just to feel more calm. This is kind of weird, but sometimes when I'm feeling very stressed out, I try to remember that we are on a planet in the galaxy and like just thinking of all of these like everyday stressful things that we go through it really helps me just to think about that reality i end up just realizing that all of our day-to-day -day stressful things are for the most part pretty insignificant when it comes to life as a whole so yeah every single day check in on your stress and learn to manage that. I think that's number one. And I think that a lot of these things that I'm talking about today can actually help with that, like the outdoor walks and moving our body and eating nourishing meals. All of those things can help with that. But even still, like last year, I was doing all of those things and my body was just like holding on to weight because I hadn't really addressed the stressful things in my life. So that completes the mind category. Again, feel free to customize that however you feel, but again, remember to be honest with yourself. Challenge yourself while being realistic. All right, next up I have follow a workout plan. So 475 hard, you had to do two workouts every single day, one which had to be outside. That was easy for me because the outdoor walk, that counted as one of my workouts. The second workout though, that was a little bit more challenging for me because I know in my soul having a rest day is important. <laughs> so when I'm looking at it as a whole, could I work out seven days a week doing that extra workout? Yes, but there's that little voice in the back of my head that says this actually isn't healthy for you, especially as someone who is working on their stress and cortisol and all of that. So for my version of the challenge, I have follow a workout plan. So what that looks like for me is I started lifting again, took about six months off of lifting in the gym. I did some group classes, did some hot yoga, some Pilates, and now I'm ready to get back into my lifting era. I love weightlifting. I just had to re-fall in love with it again because I was so into lifting for so long that I just needed a little bit of a break but we're back. So for me, I'm gonna be lifting four days a week at minimum, upwards of six days a week. I need to have at least one rest day. Of course, it's gonna be an active rest day because I'll be walking on that day as well. But I think giving myself some leeway there with my lifting and giving myself four to six days a week, I see no benefit in working out and lifting weights seven days a week for me personally. But again, if that's something that you desire, you think that would work best for you, go ahead and do that as well. If four days a week is just insane to you, shoot for two days a week. You know, whatever is gonna work best for you, again, make sure you are challenging yourself enough, but doing something that you know is gonna push you, that you, you know you can do it. So for me, that's the four to six days a week of lifting. After I lift weights, I like to do a 30 minute incline walk, um, just a little bit of low intensity cardio. And then two days a week, I like to do some high intensity cardio. So for me, I've been doing my step aerobics, which I have just been loving. And that to me, like doesn't even feel like I'm like trying to do cardio. That feels like an extracurricular activity. I, I'm just having fun. It reminds me of dance, so I think that's also something that's really fun. This isn't necessarily a rule, but if you can find something that doesn't even feel like you're working out and it feels just like a fun activity that has your heart pumping, try to find something like that. Over the summer, I was playing tennis with my brother. That was really fun. That kind of gave that sort of feel. Anything along those lines, maybe you could find like a local basketball group or a volleyball group or a run club, you know, whatever it is that you're into, that can be really helpful when you're assessing what you want your workout plan to look like. So keep that in mind, it makes it really fun. The next thing that I have on the list is drinking enough water. So on the 75 hard rules, we have drink a gallon of water. There are so many things that I've read that actually says drinking a gallon of water really isn't actually good for you. And I don't even think that the that being on the list was supposed to be that it's good for you. It's more of just like it's being mentally tough. So 
For me, um, I'm shooting for 96 ounces of water per day. I drink a lot of water in a day as it is, so for me, that isn't necessarily easy. Well, maybe, see, now maybe I need to check in with myself and be honest. I can easily get in three a day, but I know that if I do four, I'm forcing myself. So for me, I'm gonna get in at least three. If I need more, I'll get more. I can't remember where I heard this, but it was drink half your weight in ounces Per day so even with my 96 ounces I will still be getting in way more than needed but I think at the end of the day just giving yourself a good water goal something that's gonna be challenging is what's most important next up this is the same as 75 hard but follow a diet that works for you I think that the word diet has gotten such a bad rap just saying the word diet people get triggered and it sounds like you're going on a diet diet also can just mean what you're eating. You could be eating only pizza rolls and McDonald's and that is your diet. So picking a way of eating that works best for you, that's healthy. Not eating the processed foods, not eating desserts and sweets and all of that all the time, but actually focusing on healthy foods that you know are gonna nourish your body. What that looks like for me is I do a meat-based diet. I include vegetables, fruits, and healthy fats. I like to stay away from grains and flours and breads because it just doesn't make me feel good. But that also for me looks like once a month, I like to have some ice cream. So that's what that looks like for me. That can look totally different for you. You know, it really just depends. Whatever you choose, it doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. Be honest with yourself with what works best for you and follow that for the remainder of the challenge. You're gonna feel so good. The next thing I have on here, I just followed this up because 75 Hard had this as well and I put no alcohol. Personally, that's like, I almost didn't even write that down because it's not even a thought in my head because I just don't really drink as it is. I will occasionally if I'm in the mood for it, but it's like maybe once a year that I would do that. So for me, it's just like not even a thought, but I still wrote it down because I do think that it is something important to look at, especially if you are um, a regular alcohol consumer. So the next one has to go with measuring progress. So the one thing that I did not like about the 75 hard challenge was taking a progress picture every day. As someone who has had disordered eating patterns in the past and like a negative self-talk, negative body image thoughts in my head, taking a progress picture every single day is not something beneficial for me personally. Even weighing myself all the time is not something beneficial for me right now in this stage that I'm in right now. So I know that about myself, I'm not gonna do that. I did weigh myself at the beginning just so I know where I'm at and I can measure that at the very end whenever or not, I mean, I don't know. For me, I wrote down measuring my progress in a way that makes sense for me that's not going to mess with my mental health. So um, that's what I would recommend for you as well. If the scale doesn't bother you, you don't have a negative relationship with the scale, you can use that as your form of measurement. You can use progress pictures as your form of measurement. For me, what I'm doing is I'm gonna be measuring myself with measuring tape. For whatever reason, that doesn't bother me at all. It's funny because that is very direct where the scale, there's a lot that goes into like what your body weighs. You could have water, muscle, bones, fat, whatever. So the scale going up and down isn't actually representative of fat loss specifically and muscle gain specifically. You don't actually know what's happening when you see that number on the scale, unless you go and you get yourself an in-body scan. So what I've decided to do is measure myself once a week and keep a record of it um, because that is a positive thing or a neutral thing for me. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do, and this is very niche, this is not for everyone, this is for me because I do eat in a more ketogenic way. I decided to start tracking my ketones again. I haven't done that since like 2019, I don't think. And maybe 2021 I dabbled a little bit, but not really. But I decided once a week when when I do my measurements, I'm also going to check my ketones in my blood. If you're unfamiliar with like what that even means, basically you can check and see how deep into ketosis that you are and measuring your blood in that way is how you can do that. Those are two ways that I'm gonna be measuring myself just so I can keep the progress going. I'll probably take some progress pictures as well, but doing it every single day was just a bit much for me personally. So pick a form of measurement so that you can check in on your progress. And then the last category is soul. So we've got mind, body, and soul. So one thing that I have noticed the last few years is that my relationship with God has just felt very distant. And so this 
what I'm going to be doing will be a lot different for you. But I think that this is something that I have just, not I think, I know that this is something that I've been really missing in my life and it's just being more close with God. And so um, at the beginning of this year, Ruben and I have started watching church every single Sunday. And then also in the morning, I will be praying in the morning and at night at least. I used to pray all the time and I don't know why, but that's just, I've just gotten a lot quieter. So that can look different for everyone depending on like what your faith is and what your spirituality is like. That could be when you go out on your walk, just going without any earphones and just like listening to like the wind and being in nature. I love like, to be honest, like I feel God more like in nature at the beach in a forest like more than anything else so i feel you but you know whether that's like morning meditation maybe it's like reading the bible you know whatever it is for you i think checking in because i think the world can just become very chaotic it can get very noisy it can get very loud and it just feels like i've felt the distance and i need to get more connected and so these are the things that i'm going to be doing again customize it for you maybe you do those things already and you want to like take it one step further with journaling or like a group of friends that like you get together and you do your spiritual things you know whatever it is i think it is an important thing and it's something that i just haven't dedicated a lot of my time to and i would like to so i added that in here because i do think it's something that's really important i think even doing yoga was something like that for me every time i've done yoga i felt really close with God in those moments. And it's more of like a, it gives like a meditation kind of vibe. So I think maybe even doing yoga once a week could be something good for me as well. Whatever that looks like for you. Those are my quote unquote rules. Again, all of this is very customizable and that's the point. Um, I don't want you to look at this and be like, oh, that is like way too regimented, way too much for me. The whole point is so that you can make it very customized for you. But again, make sure you are still challenging yourself because that is the point. The point is to get uncomfortable, to try new things and level up because we keep doing the same things over and over again. We do what we're used to, we do what, we do what we're comfortable with. Then our life is gonna be exactly, exactly the same. And even if we have a gorgeous, beautiful life, which all of us do have a beautiful life because we're alive, the constant pursuit of trying to better ourselves is so important having that growth mindset is really important and so i really encourage you to push yourself try some sort of something that's going to challenge you if it's not this exactly maybe it's something else maybe you take one thing out of this challenge and that's what you're gonna do because there's definitely so much reward at the end when you complete something i think that a lot of us are just lacking that self-confidence and all of that comes from following through with promises that we've made for ourselves share what you're going to be doing down below i really want to know what you guys are going to do because it's really going to inspire me as well say you see this list and you're like actually i can do xyz extra or whatever whatever you're going to do to customize it put it down below in the comments we can all encourage each other down below and I'm gonna make vlogs and we're gonna check in with each other. I'm gonna post on Instagram. It can just be a little fun thing that we're doing as a group. And I am just so excited because this is like the most motivated I've ever been at the beginning of a year. I've never felt so just like positive and confident and like ready to take on the year. And I think part of that is because I've really implemented a lot of these things that I've shared today into my everyday routine. And so something like this feels like something I can do, but it still is a challenge for myself. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. So when it comes down to the name of this, again, right now I have it titled as 75 Hard Brianna's Version. We can keep that or we can do every day till May. I like that as well because you can join in at any point or we can still call it 75 hard Brianna's version, and then also say every day till May. I don't know. If you have any sort of idea of what we can call this, let me know down below in the comments. Someone says something that you like, give it a thumbs up so that we can all see it. But yeah, I just kind of want like a catchy name, something that we can all kind of just participate in. And I'm just really, I'm really excited. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope that this gave you all of the inspiration and motivation. Again, just a friendly reminder, it's not about motivation that keeps you going. It's about being disciplined and following through every day on the things that you've promised yourself. That is what quote unquote motivation looks like on the outside. Most people aren't motivated. The people that are motivated end up quitting 
because if you focus only on being motivated with things, that's so fleeting. And then when your motivation goes away, if whether you did something or not was based on if you were motivated, you're gonna end up failing. So I encourage you to stay disciplined with whatever it is that you do. Follow through on the things that you've promised yourself because you're gonna thank yourself. You're gonna be so happy that you completed whatever it was that you set out for yourself. I know that you can do it. I'm really excited for you. I'm excited for me and I'm excited for this challenge. So again, please let me know down below how you're gonna do this challenge for yourself. I'm gonna put my rules down below for what I'm doing. I'm also gonna link my favorite books down below as well in case you need some inspiration for some self-development books. But yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'm so excited to do this with you. Um, let me know what you're most excited about and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.